hello. <sighs> Here is a wrap up. I've been kind of reading a lot and I haven't done a wrap up in a long time. So this is more like a highlights reel of what I've been reading. I'm kind of definitely a highlights reel. So there is a lot more on this list, but I'm just going to talk about these books because they stood out to me at this moment. And before we get going with this, please like and subscribe and hit that little button down there, you know, doobly-doo thing. All of my social media links are down below, but if you're interested, and my link to my other channel are there. So if you guys want to get in touch, feel free. So let's start. Let's put these here. The, I, the first book that I read was the official novelization of Halloween. Now this is the this is the official novelization of the 2018 film. I the publisher sent this to me in exchange for an honest review, and I will be honest. Uh, it's a very typical film novelization. But it's based on the screenplay, so it includes a few deleted scenes, which is why I read it. I'm a bit of a Halloween geek. The original and this stand is two of my favourite horror movies. The only, my only real criticism of this book is actually the format. It's in a mass market paperback, so it's very small. And the text is quite small, which for me is a problem. But a very enjoyable book. So, uh, overall a good 3.5 out of 5. They also sent me Spider-Man, Forever Young. Uh, this is part of the novel of the a novel of the Marvel Universe. There's a few of these. There's Deadpool and Ant-Man. Um, it was kind of apt when this showed up because of Stan Lee passing. Um, it wasn't my favourite. I'm not a big Spider-Man fan, and I'm not a big Marvel fan. I know, controversial. It was still very enjoyable and very fun. But that's all I can really say about it. But, but, you know, it's enjoyable and fun. It's very well written. The writer definitely, I think, got Peter Parker right. Uh, it kind of reminded me in tone of Peter Parker, of the, of the classic animated series from the 90s. So, yeah, overall fun and enjoyable. I'm going to include these both in this wrap-up. So, Cthulhu and Cthulhu. Two different takes on Sherlock Holmes versus Cthulhu. And they actually are both equally as good, but equally different. This is slightly more steampunkish. The, the the pace is much faster. It's more adventure. Where this one's more in the style of the classic Sherlock Holmes, a little bit slower, more dialogue and story focused. Both very enjoyable. And if you like Sherlock Holmes, if you like H.P. HP Lovecraft, check both of these out if you want a very different experience. I read The Power, and I get why people think this is amazing, and I get why, actually, I think it's quite an important book in terms of just what it does, but it left me cold. It didn't make me go, wow. It, I, it, Margaret Atwood called this electrifying, and it often gets compared to The Handmaid's Tale, but The Handmaid's Tale is far better. It definitely wasn't a favourite. Um, I, I didn't hate it. It was about an average. I'll call this average. It was, yeah, it was average. Didn't really leave a lasting impression. And to the point that I'm, I struggled to get through this. It was just average. <sighs> Lifelike by, I think that's how you say it, by Joe Kristoff. I'm a little bitter over this book because the UK never got a hardback. And I know I'm very pro ebook and very pro downsizing. But with a cover like that, I w I've got Nevernight in hardback and though that the first two and I'll get the third. But if I like a writer, I like to collect them and there's only a handful of people and I was very disappointed. So this became a library book. I like Jay Kristoff. I'm a huge fan of his. My favourite books by him are the Nevernight series. To be honest, I don't, I didn't particularly rate um, Illuminae because that's the book that everyone on BookTube screams about and says it's amazing. And beyond its gimmick, it just 
told a very generic science fiction story. Um, this, on the other hand, is quite gutty and quite visceral. It's not a, it's not an easy book in the sense of content. It's not my favourite of John of J. Christoph's books, which are like his Nevernight series and God's Grave, but definitely an interesting book and a very good piece of science fiction. And I'm amazed this didn't. For some reason, a lot of people that scream about J. Christoph, big booktubers, did not talk about this book. Shame on you, because this is fucking amazing. <sighs> The Living. This is the final book in the Warm Bodies series. And yes, Warm Bodies is a series. Um, the Burning Earth and and there was another one. Uh, a New Hunger and Burning World came out and uh, The Burning World didn't do as well. And he was subsequently dropped and there's a whole big drama. And people are still shocked that this is a series. This is the fourth and final book in the Warm Bodies series. And it wraps things up beautifully. It's brilliantly written. The pacing, the intelligence, the characters. I've given this book its own video, so please do check out if you want. Do check that video out if you want to watch a deeper review of this book. And finally, a reread: The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. I love Practical Magic. It's one of my favourite books, and it's one of my favourite films. And it's one of the few cases I think the film is better than the book. But this is better than both of them. This is a very strong, great book. It's a prequel to Practical Magic, and it's very typical magical realism, brilliantly written characters, quite funny in places, and very enjoyable. So I do love Alice Hoffman. I, she's one of my favourite writers. So tell me, guys, have you read any of those, and what did you think of them? Because tell me. Tell me in those comments, because that's always important. And um, 